Mail wedge. <laughs> Mail wedge is what brings us together today. <laughs> My name is Father Ian. I'm Amanda's brother, if you don't know me. And thanks to the internet, I'm a newly ordained minister. Wow. <laughs> Takes about 45 seconds to get qualified for that job. <laughs> when Amanda asked me to do it, we went on the internet, and we typed in, how do you get ordained? And Google said, get ordained today. So we went to the website, it had first name and last name. We're like, oh cool, let's get this process started. We put those in, click next. And the next page popped up and it said, congratulations. <laughs> so now, after I've gone through so much work of becoming ordained, I'd like to be referred to as Father Ian for the rest of this weekend. <laughs> Before we get into the nitty gritty of this wedding, I'd like to invite Sharon Larson up here for a quick reading. The scripture that I've chosen is from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and we start at verse 4. And it's probably one of the more well-read scriptures at a wedding because it talks about love. And truly, that is what has brought us here today. <laughs> <laughs> love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. Love does not demand its own way. Love is not irritable, and it keeps no record of when it has been wronged. It is never glad when injustice, but with it about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstance. Love will last forever. There are three things that will endure. Faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of these is love. Taylor and Amanda, I wish you the greatest of love, always. Let love be your highest goal. Me and Amanda go way back. <laughs> and as of a few years ago, Taylor joined our family as well. These two mean the world to me, and I'm truly honored to be here doing this today. When they asked me to do their ceremony, I asked them, did they want it to be cute? Did they want it to be funny? Did they want romantic? Did they want any readings? They said, to put a little touch of myself into it, keep it light, keep it fun, but most importantly, they wanted it to be nice and short, so we can <clears throat> get our drink on! <laughs> exactly how they said it. <laughs> so, dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to bear witness to the joining of two beautiful souls in the holiest of matrimony, Amanda Nicole Britt and Taylor Lynn Colleen Snow. If you're here today, it means that for one reason or another, Amanda and Taylor are thankful for having you in their lives, and they want to share this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity with you. You've watched them grow up. You've worked or went to school with them. You might have helped them out of a sticky situation. If you're like me, you might have locked them in the bathroom when they were a baby because they wouldn't shut the hell up. <laughs> <laughs> You've come from nearby and from far to share in this commitment that they make to one another. And frankly, I'm a bit surprised at how far some of you are willing to come for a free meal. <laughs> They're blessed to have you in their lives, to offer your love and support to their union, and to allow Amanda and Taylor to start their married life together, surrounded by the people who mean the most to them. So please, everybody enjoy. Let's share some laughs and make some great memories. This is going to be a very special day for these two, one that they'll look back on for the rest of their lives as they join their family and their lives into one. Amanda and Taylor have made many memories, 
and they're going to make many more. If you've spent much time around them, you've definitely seen that they are truly themselves together, and they complement one another greatly. They're like yin and... Sorry, I messed that part up. Amanda gave me some socks. They have their chips and guacamole socks. <laughs> so these two aren't like yin and yang. They're like chips and guacamole <laughs> and salsa. Because those things go together better than anything else. On their journey together, they're going to find that love and commitment is a matter of giving and taking, loving and receiving, having and sharing, ups and downs, highs and lows, peaks and valleys. Those are all pretty much the same thing. <laughs> I just wanted to really drive the point home. <laughs> For those of you that don't know the love story of Amanda and Taylor, it goes a little like this. Amanda and Taylor used to think of themselves as a one-girl wolf pack. <laughs> but when they met, they knew the other was one of their own. And their wolf pack, it grew by one. <laughs> Amanda was alone, first, in the pack, and Taylor joined in later. <laughs> so there were two wolves, one in, running through this wolf pack through the forest of Washington. And one night they were howling at the moon, and Amanda thought, wait, could this be real? And she asked Taylor to join in her wolf pack forever. <laughs> Which brings us here today. After this time that they've spent together and the love that has blossomed, these two have decided to permanently join their lives together. And according to a bunch of random websites that I browse through to figure out what's supposed to go into a wedding ceremony, this brings us to the definition of marriage. Now, since I'm just about the last person to give any kind of marriage advice, I had to do some research for this part. And according to a great little article written by BuzzFeed titled 12 Things Only Married People Can Understand, here's what I found. <laughs> marriage is the ultimate promise made between two people. It's a promise of everlasting love. It's two people combining all of their separate parts into one amazing whole. It's a team, like the Seahawks, but cooler and better and way more fun than the Seahawks. <laughs> it is always working together against the rest of the world. At its most basic level, marriage is a partnership. You share common vision, common goals, common strategies, and you come up with common plans, and then you execute those plans together. It's a we mentality. It's not a me mentality. It's win-win. It's not I win, you lose, or you lose and I win. No matter what happens, you're always on the same team. You're in the same boat, and you're gonna row in the same direction, no matter what. There will be plenty of times when you disagree on which direction to steer the boat. But even when it's the dead of night and it's dark and it's raining and you can't see anything ahead, you're going to row your boat to shore and you're going to do it together. And just as importantly, marriage is about trust. You need to trust 100% in one another and know that no matter what, you always have each other's back. Always remember, it's the two of you fighting together against the rest of the world. And if you can trust in each other, it's going to be a much easier time. And marriage is about honoring one another as individual wolves. And now that you guys understand what you've signed up for, you're going to share your vows. Amanda and Taylor have decided to share their own vows today. <coughs> Taylor, on this day, I give you my heart. I promise to love you and respect you, to encourage you and inspire you, to love you when life seems easy and when it seems hard. But most of all, I promise to make sure I'm not yelling at you just because I'm hungry. <laughs> I hope you know that I love you and I will continue to love you. I will strive to be the best version of myself and I will remember that we are t stronger together than we are as individuals and I'll not walk away when things get tough.
You are my love and my life. Today, tomorrow, and always. I love you. And here's to forever. Amanda. Today I have loved you for 1,089 days. But don't ask how long that took me to figure out. <laughs> but from this day forward, I promise to love you for a lifetime. A lifetime full of everlasting devotion, loyalty, respect, and unconditional love. I can't promise you that tomorrow will be perfect or that life will be easy. But I can promise that I'll always be here for you to listen and to hold your hand and always make the best, do the best to make me happy, even if it means killing all the spiders. <laughs> I can promise to always cheer you on and encourage you, unless I don't agree with your bad decision. But most importantly, I promise to be your protector, your advisor, your counselor, your friend, your family, and your everything. I love you. Sorry, I'm not digging in my butt. I'm just trying to get the ring. <laughs> your, wedding, your wedding ring, so you guys know, is a symbol of your promise to one another. It represents unending love. It is a symbol of eternity because it's a circle. There is no beginning. There is no end. It's not like a triangle. A triangle has corners. This one doesn't, because it's a circle. <laughs> Amanda, what you're going to do here is place this ring on Taylor's finger and repeat these words after me. <laughs> Taylor Lynn Colleen Snow. Taylor Lynn Colleen Snow. I give this ring to you as a symbol of my love. I give this ring to you as a symbol of my love. And I'm choosing you to share in my life's journey. And I'm choosing you to share in my life's journey. I give you this ring with the pledge to love you. I give you this ring with the pledge to love you. Today, tomorrow, always, and forever. Today, tomorrow, always, and forever. <laughs> Taylor, place this ring on Amanda's finger and repeat after me. Amanda Nicole Britt. Amanda Nicole Britt. I give this ring to you as a symbol of my love. I give this ring to you as a symbol of my love. And I'm choosing you to share in my life's journey. And I'm choosing you to share in my life's journey. I give you this ring with the pledge to love you. I give you this ring with the pledge to love you. Today, tomorrow, always and forever. Today, tomorrow, always and forever. Amanda and Taylor, you have just committed yourselves one to the other by the pledge of your marriage vows and in the exchanging of wedding rings. Your life is now one. To celebrate your union and honor Amanda's Jewish ancestry, you will now break some perfectly good glass into itty bitty pieces. <laughs> but first, I thought it would be cool to do a quick history lesson on why we break the glass. I personally had no idea why we do it, so I had to do my own research by watching Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark of <laughs> In Judaism, the temple is regarded as the physical focal point of faith and worship. The first temple constructed was Solomon's temple and was dedicated to Yahweh and is said to have housed the Ark of the Covenant. This temple was burned down about four to 500 years later by King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. So the Jewish people rebuilt on top of it a new temple, which was then burned down later by the Romans. Now. The only accessible remains of these temples is a small section of the Western Wall, which is now famously visited by Jewish people all around the world. Can we please bring the glass up? This glass was created specifically for this moment as Amanda and Taylor sanctify their marriage. As a symbol of the destruction of the Temple of Jerusalem, this glass reminds us of sadness, even in the happiest times, which is, of course, right now. Be free, be. <laughs> like your marriage, 
piece. This glass is a beautiful thing. It's transparent and it allows light to pass right through it. If cared for properly, it can last for a lifetime. <clears throat> like a marriage though, it can also be quite fragile. We stop the glass at the end of a wedding ceremony to remind you that just as your foot can shatter this glass, so too can a single act cause irreparable harm to your marriage. When you entered into marriage today, you committed an irrevocable act, permanent and final. As you stop this glass at the finish of the ceremony, so too will you be committing an irrevocable act. It can no more be undone than this glass can be made whole again. Cherish each other with the love and respect that the love of your life is. Sorry, he was getting me distracted. Cherish each other with the love and respect that the love of your life deserves. The traditional breaking of the glass marks the end of the ceremony and the beginning of the celebration. It's tradition for everyone present to shout the Hebrew words, Mazel Tov, as they break the glass. This means congratulations and good luck. May your bond be May your bond of love be as difficult to break as it would be to put back these pieces of glass. Break the glass. Pause the glass. Pause the glass. <laughs> and with that, you have come here today of your own free will. And in the presence of family and friends, you have declared your love and commitment to each other. You have given and received a ring as your symbol of promises. Amanda Taylor, I want to wish you guys tons of happiness and love and joy in the future. And I just want to tell you, keep lots of laughter, lots of good food, and lots of honesty, and you're going to have a good time. By the power of your love and commitment to each other, and by the power vested in me, by the state of Washington, and by the totally not fake Universal Life Church, I now pronounce you legally wedded wives. You may share your first kiss.